oh, it's not a true rally car, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the suspension of the hull, it makes up for it. Oh, you're scaring me. <laughs> yeah, eat lads. This is very annoying because I've actually already filmed all of this video and I went back and I don't know if I deleted the clips by accident or my camera did it, but basically I've got all the footage from the GoPro but all of the camera thing has been deleted. So I'm going to have to do all of the intro and the in interior and exterior and all that stuff again, which is very annoying because I can't actually remember what I said last time, but I'm going to just treat it as if we're doing a whole new review and then just crack on and hopefully it, it windles in correctly. We've got Nicole's 2.5 Subaru Impreza. We've got a Scooby on the channel again. Now the main thing with this video is going to be is going to be comparing my old Subaru to this one. One of the biggest questions I always get is what do the Subarus feel like compared to the Evos? And every really do because I feel like they are two totally different cars. This is a 2.5 WRX, so I'm really intrigued to see how the 2.5 drives because uh, I had the two liter. Now this is very annoying because I'm trying to talk now like I've not driven the car, but obviously this is after. So I think I'm just going to skip to all the little nibbly things about the car and the interiors and what's Nicole's done to the car, and I'm going to leave the drive into when I actually drive the car in the GoPro footage after. So I said a minute ago, this is the 2.5 litre and I know that these got a lot of stick from the Subaru community for not being like true rally cars and stuff. And the worst thing about the 2.5 is Nicole actually pays around how much? 500 and... 55 pound tax. This is the WRX, this is not the STI, so this is really good comparison from this one to the WRX which I had and then obviously I, I will be looking out to drive an STI and also compare this to the STI as well. This has got the full STI interior which just ties it all off a lot better. I know the WRX seats are really sort of basic and not very pretty. And although like the STI seats aren't that much different than the WRXs in terms of like um, the mold and stuff but just the way they look and i feel like they feel a lot nicer as well the uh wrx seats are just like all cloth but these have got a little bit of like suede alcantara in the middle now it's really hard to come into like a subaru and a lot of jap cars and the things like that as i said with jesse civic it's really hard to like nitpick things i like and don't like inside the interiors everything's just really basic and everything that you need is there and everything you don't need isn't there so when you look at the interior here nothing like stands out or anything like that it's just a very basic interior obviously we've got some gauges we've got three gauges you say i think we've got an oil temp a oil pressure and a water temp all useful gauge and then we've got a boost over here and then a battery volt one which everyone knows i don't like battery volt gauge i feel like it's just there to what I don't like it either. you don't like the battery volt gauge yeah no <laughs> but it's quite ironic because the actual dials and stuff they look exactly like my blob eye this the interior is pretty much the exact exact same other than the steering wheel the hawkeye steering wheel is much smaller and much sort of pretty design i know the blob eye uh where steering wheel was huge it felt like i was driving a bus that's scratching his ball. what, it's scratching his ball. what on, on the on the fence <laughs> now this has also got some another uh, uh, like sti it's got the full carbon sti spoiler which is i when i looked when i was uh i think they're like what are the sti spoilers nearly the sti carbon spoilers like nearly like 800 pound on scooby world aren't they so, very expensive so the sti carbon spoilers are very expensive because that it's got full it's got an actual uh carbon lip on the front as well this is the hawk so they've got the classic then they've got the bug the blob and then the hawks this is like the last generation of what they call the the new age and i personally think that this is like the prettiest one i feel like the other ones the, the classics are good looking i feel like the bugs didn't really get it right with the front end the blobs never really got it right with the front end they all kind of share the same rear end but i feel like the hawkeye just adds that the, the pretty look i feel like it's like the evo eights and nines they've, they've kind of gone away from the rally look and going to like the sort of road car show sort of scene and i i think this is these are the prettiest shape they're not the most rallyish shape of them all, but the prettiest ones I definitely think they are. The only thing I do not like about the Hawkeyes is they've kind of toned it down on the aggressiveness. If you, if so, for example, one example would be the Blob Eyes. If you look at the Blob Eye STIs, the STI scoops like come like all the way up here, and if you look at even the Hawkeye scoops, the Hawkeye STI scoops they're still the same size as that i feel like they've kind of toned down the aggression side uh, so that's the one thing i do prefer about the blobs over the hawks now nicole's been through many different exhausts for this car i think you're on your third one now yes. so obviously she goes to exhaust works it's the same guy i always take my exhaust to he's an absolute unreal guy the middle pipe was miltech and the back box was just like a 
I don't even know what the back box was. Was that when you bought the car? Yeah, when I bought the car, that was what was already on it. Right. Um, I did like it, but I just wanted to get something done by, do you know, exhaust works. And not only that, it was blowing as well, so... And it, did you say it wasn't loud enough? No, it wasn't. Right, okay. So so then you went to exhaust works, got an exhaust on, and it still wasn't loud enough. No. And then... He put such a big back box on that it was... So it, was it was a very, it was a very, uh, hey, look at me, back box. And now, and now it's a smaller back box, and I've just been in the back of it, and it is very loud when you're in the back. That's another negative. I actually did the GoPro footage in the in the clip you're going to see in a minute, and that was with the older exhaust, which was quieter. So now it's it's a lot louder. It's a lot louder. Yeah. So it's still the standard turbo, which comes in the WRXs for the Scoobies. It's a TDO4, uh, and we had the two. We got there was a low boost map, which is running like six psi, which is like really really low boost. And there's a high boost, which is, I think like the target boost is around 20 psi. So there's a big difference in high and low boost. We actually took on a dyno. Uh, we all went to a little down day the other day. You took yours on it, and did it run two? Fifty on low boost. Two fifty on low boost and, and two eighty on high boost with three hundred and fifty pounds. Of two eighty on high boost, uh, and the dynos were running really low that day. Everyone was running a lot lower. So it is pushing around about three hundred horse to the flywheel, but it's, it was running three fifty foot pound, which is a hell of a lot of torque. So I can only imagine that's coming from the two point five over the two liters. Now Nicole actually got this car for such a good deal. How much did you get it? So it was just over five grand. I think there's only one more thing to do, Nicole. We'll get a little start up, and then let's cut to the GoPro footage. That's where I say let's take it for a drive. But I've already took it for a drive, so we'll just cut to the GoPro footage. So one thing I'm going to note straight away is why I love these cars and what's better about these than the uh, than the Evos. It's just the standard drivability of them. The drivability of them is just so much easier and just so much more user friendly and day to day. Like the steering lock on these is amazing. You get like almost two full turns and coming from a rally car, you think that's what you'd expect. So I was very surprised with the Evos when they have the worst turning circles ever, but the turning circles on the Subarus are just so nice. And the steering rack overall is just way I don't want to use the word softer because softer sounds like it's in a negative way because the steering is really, really responsive, <laughs> but it, it just feels nicer and not as harsh and the steering is just, as I'm going to say it again, but just so much more user friendly. Similar sort of things with the pedals, the clutch is nice, but my old Subaru felt very much like a cable clutch instead of a hydraulic clutch. This one feels proper like a hydraulic clutch. Nicole had some issues a couple of weeks ago with the, what what was it? Was it the um, the pivot on the clutch fork snap, yeah, something it, like that? So the uh, pivot ball, it has literally gone through the clutch fork. It was really, really ridiculous. Yeah, like okay, it was really heavy, yes. Yeah. I've said this as soon as I got in it, this would be a much, much, much better daily than the Evos. Massive, like I could easily drive this car every single day. It's actually really nice to drive. I'm not sure who did the work with the forged pistons and the upgraded head gasket, but that was, how many miles ago did you say, Nicole? 10,000? 10, 10, 20, yeah. ish. Okay, so around about there we go. I went with Nicole to pick it up because obviously I know what to look, where to look for for rust with Subarus. Um, and I looked underneath, and it's got a suspension that I've never ever heard of before. I googled it, and it was expensive. It was like a thousand pounds for the setup. They're not coilovers. They're actually a uh, like a spring on a strut, uh, and they're, they're amazing. They're really good. They're really soft. And for a Subaru, you usually get a load of body roll. I got a lot of body roll in the corners, where this is absolutely amazing. It's so much fun. Like it's stiff, but not to a point where you're hitting every pothole. And I was so surprised because when you when it when I first got in it, it felt like it would be very soft around the corners just because how soft the suspension is. But it's it's like it's a bit like when you pick up a high performance car from factory and they've got that sort of soft feel, yet you think, why is it so soft but so stable in the corners now the power it's totally not what I expected either um, on the dyno it come across the 280 horse obviously I was saying that it would have been a little bit higher than that but it come with two, 350 foot pound and the same again that's on a dyno which is running a little bit low as well that's mega torque numbers for a petrol engine like insane torque numbers 
and you can really feel it. It's just, then you've got so much torque. And I'm guessing that's down to the 2.5 liter engine. I guess they can get a lot more oomph from that initial put down of the accelerator. Now, going on from that with a 2.5 engine, my mine had a TDO4 turbo and it was running 20 PSI and it was around about 300 brake. This has got the exact same turbo, but you know, in third gear and stuff, when you when you put in, you know, a, a realistic amount of load on the turbo, you're hitting around about 15, 16 PSI, which isn't a lot. Now, it is a bigger engine, so it's not needing as much boost and there's not much uh, sort of pressure from the engine or restriction from the engine. So that's probably how you can get the same numbers with a lot less boost, but it comes on so hard and so well and so fast. I was surprised by how fast it comes on boost. Subaru had a massive boost lag and that was the only reason why I was saying that they just feel so much heavier and slower than the Evos and that's just because the amount of boost lag they had but this one doesn't feel anything like mine in a positive way. Uh, the, at the minute it's running about 17 just over and uh, now the air the air density is really hot today so that you that you will see a notice in boost pressure right we're gonna we're gonna put the mitsubishi sunglasses on because we're gonna go for a little bit of a spirited drive now are the only downside to this car. Nicole changed her around about a month ago, she says. Uh, can you remember the brand? No, I didn't change them. You um, didn't change the, them? No, when I, when I bought the car, it said they'd been done around Oh, he said they'd been done, yeah. right, okay. Yeah, so the brakes are really not good, but the way it comes in boost, it doesn't, it doesn't drive like what I assume Subarus to drive like, sluggish. I've always said that the Subarus feel like they've got a flywheel made out of lead, uh, just because they take ages to rev up, ages to come on boost. This just contradicts everything that I've ever said about them, to be fair, in a good way. Like, you put, it feels like it's actually not got a TDO4. I'm quite surprised when Nicole said it's got a TDO4, because that's quite, although it's known as a small, picky up the turbo, my experiences, experiences of them are actually, when you map them, are actually quite laggy. But this one, it's just like three candy, you've got boost there straight away, and it just keeps going and going and going. The boost backs off, but it doesn't feel like it, because you've got that 2.5, you've got the bigger capacity of the engine, it'll just keep pulling and pulling and pulling. I don't understand why these engines have got so much stick. I can now, but to, I was one of those guys who did give them stick. Oh, it's not a true rally car, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I can totally understand driving one there way more fun than the two liter engines in my opinion it actually feels like a high capacity car now not with an engine that's just stuck a turbo on and needs that turbo i always got the feel that the two liters needed that turbo so much you know they had no power before and it backed off a lot where these it, it just works so well now with with the two of them i personally think after driving this that this is one of the best cars you can get for five grand honestly other than the mps's the mazda mps's it's a it's a it's a close one between them two but honestly if you want to get into the all-wheel drive thing and, and you wanted to step up to an evo that the skyline gtrs this is perfect honestly this is this is one of the most fun you can get from a five grand car the, the tires they've got a Nankang NS2s. Not the best. Not the Anka, <laughs> not the An Nankang NS2 R's. The R's are the semi slicks. Um, but you know they're not bad. Definitely not bad. But the suspension as a whole, it makes up for it. Like it doesn't feel like it's got shit tires on. The car is. It's so soft, yet so nimble. Like look at it, it's great. <laughs> So it has got a built-in rev match. Uh, God, the suspension. <laughs> I'm very surprised by the suspension. Wow, <laughs> this is fun, man. <laughs> this is a fun car. That's impressive. I am actually, I take everything back what i've said about subarus and the thing is no offense to you nicole but this is a wrx as well 
Uh, why? All right. Oh my god, I take back everything bad about said about Subarus. Oh, you're scaring me. No. It's great, man. The, the way this car drives and the way it comes on boost, that's all down to Andy Forrest who maps it. I, this isn't even like a plug. I've never even met the guy. I've just heard of him like on the Subaru pages, but this car is mapped phenomenally. Phenom phenomenally. Well, I, I'm gonna have to find out the name of the suspension because I forgot Headers. it. Pedders. 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 Yeah. So it's got pedder suspension on a lot. I know a lot of the Subaru guys were kicking me right now, so that might be a massive thing in the Subaru world. But when I heard mine, I didn't know much about it, and I, a lot of my friends didn't run it either. Um, but this car is good, man. So as you see from the footage, I was really impressed with this car. Actually, impressed probably the wrong word. I was surprisingly shocked. I genuinely didn't think it would drive as well as it did. I remember it was actually hard for me to get out of the car. Like even even after the review done, like I still want to drive the car. It's just such a nice car to drive. It's like literally a perfect daily in a way. It drives so nice. It drives so smooth. The power comes on really good, and it feels really well built. Obviously, it has had an engine rebuild. That's probably why it does feel that good. But I'm really impressed with this car. Definitely don't get put off when the S when the Dubrex is comparing to the SDIs. This is a really good car. So I'm mean, really intrigued to see how the S how how I can't actually see how much better the STIs may be from a feeling perspective, but I suppose we're gonna have to just find out that from ourselves. Huge thank you to Greenlight as well. We're actually able to do the reviews now very regularly because of Greenlight. So huge thanks to Greenlight Insurance. Huge thank you to Nicole. Thanks for watching, guys. Hey guys, it's Nicole. Hey guys, it's Nicole. <laughs> uh, we genuinely thought there'd be less cars during this review, but we've been very annoyed. So I have to keep pausing the camera for three seconds. But thanks for watching. See you next time.